Welcome to part two of our war game tutorial video. So we're walking through how to create this little card game using the Android Xamarin tools. And when we left off, we had set up our two screens that we are initially going to need for our game. And we had imported in all of the playing cards that we're going to need for our application. And so the first thing I want to do is now talk about how to set up our object class that's going to handle our cards and, and kind of the values since we're playing the game of war. And we need to be able to evaluate each card, right? Card one, which is going to be our computer player, card two, which is going to be our player. And then, uh, how do we, how can we tell who's won? And so, I'm going to come over to my project and I'm going to right click on the project and I'm going to add a class. And you can see it there on the menu. And I'm going to name this class card. Now, card games or representations thereof have been uh, kind of beat to death, especially in .NET applications or any uh, object oriented programming language because it's something that we understand. We all understand card games and the rules behind card games and it's a really good exercise in object-oriented programming to think about how to use this idea of a deck that contains these objects inside which have cards or, or which are cards and cards have uh, kind of some properties about them. They have a, a suit, right? Clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. They have a value, so the face value of the card and then how do we weight that value or determine which card is better than another card for our particular game. And then furthermore, we're going to need all of these individual cards to help us represent a deck which we can then shuffle. So here's a very basic representation of the kind of class that I'm talking about. So we have our constructor. Our constructor is going to take in the face value of the card and the suit type and we are going to assign those to our public properties face value and suit. We're using an enum, right, and an enumeration for our four types of uh, suits that we have in our uh, playing cards. So clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. So just a very simple representation of a card. Now there is a change that I want to make to the card class and it was something that you know once I thought about it uh, we wouldn't want to use an integer we would want to use an enumeration for rank just like we did for the suit type. And so I went ahead and set up just this uh, rank enumeration. And so uh, you can see here as they as we move through the uh, enum, C sharp is basically going to assign values to this enumeration um, starting at 1 and then moving down to 13. Um, you, and you can see that as you put your mouse over them uh, what's going on there, rank dot three equals two, right? And if you wanted to change this, then you could actually equal this to a value um, or put them in the order that you wanted. And so that's essentially what's happening here with the suit type as well. And so then I just needed to change rank value and the uh, face value property to rank as well. And I, I think that ultimately when I thought about it, will make our, um, it'll make our program a little easier to write. And so, really, this is why I, uh, I'm a big advocate for the planning phase of software development, especially if it's the kind of application that you've not worked on before and it's been a long time uh, since I've made any card applications. And so, uh, it, don't make it harder on yourself, right? And don't have to backtrack and, and remake things that you've already made just because you didn't think about it the first time. So, just that's a, that's a lesson learned. And then finally, um, it'd probably be good to put some error checking in here. So in our constructor, we're past our, our value, which is our rank, and our suit. So we could say something like if our, um, our enum for, let's do if uh, enum dot is defined, and then we'll do type of the uh, suit type. And our value is suit. Uh, if that's true, and and so it's somehow passed us a suit type we didn't define, then we'll just throw 
a new um, let's do argument out of range exception and then same thing I'll just copy this for our uh, rank if they've somehow passed us a value that doesn't fit then we'll throw a new argument out of range exception there too and that'll just make this whole deck creation process a little nicer so we won't have to worry that we might accidentally create a card that doesn't exist that would be very bad so now that we have kind of the basis for creating a card next we'll create a class for a deck and that will allow us to go ahead and create a deck and then set up a way to shuffle that deck so once again I'll come over to my solution explorer and I will right click add a class and I'm going to call this one deck and since we won't need a specific instance of class deck I'm gonna make this a static class and so what we'll want is a static public void create deck and so when we call create deck we basically need to create the 52 playing cards that will make up our deck okay so we created this deck class let's do something cool here and create our deck and at least get it initialized so I'm gonna set up uh, up here in the class private list of type card and then this is essentially going to hold all of our our cards inside of it so don't forget the static keyword on there because we're working in a static class so in create deck this is where we will initialize our list so this is a new list of type card so that will create an instance of the list object so that it, we won't get um, you know any errors when we go to use this list and I'm gonna do this with a for loop so for our int uh, suit and I'm having to cast this to int because we are using enu uh, our enumerations there we go got that written out right I don't know where I was going with that so we'll start with, are we starting with clubs? Actually, I don't think I'm doing that right. No, I am starting it with clubs. There we go. Lowest number on the enumeration set. And while our suit is less than or equal to the end of our enumeration, which is diamonds. So that's card, suit type diamonds and we have to cast that to an int because remember all these uh, enumerations they equal a value a numeric value okay so making sure that we're iteration iterating iterating through uh, clubs to diamonds inside of our list of suit types and then another for loop inside for our rank Oops. and we started it with ace while the rank is less than or equal to the value at the highest end of our enumeration so we start with ace and we end with king Oops. So inside of here is where I will create my card and I'm going to use uh, var since I, I don't want to have to set up an object type.
So here's where I'll create my my new card. And so we are passing it the uh, suit. I'm sorry, the rank first. Make sure I pay attention to my constructor. And then the suit. And these are integers because that's the way they're set up up here. So we'll have to make sure that we're casting them appropriately. And so this is a card dot rank. And this is a card dot suit type. In order to get the constructor to take them correctly. Once we have the card created, which we do now, then we can add it to our uh, list, this list of, of cards up here. So I have cards dot add a card. So this will essentially build a deck of cards for us. And sometimes it's, it's easier, especially when you're building mobile app projects like this, to just whip out a, a quick console application so that you can see how this really should work. Um, and so that you can test your, your loops or your algorithms and that way you can be sure that you're actually doing this correctly before you, it gets to the point where you're dealing with other elements inside of the UI and, and testing your mobile app to find weird little bugs in things like your nested for loops. So next I'm going to set up a shuffle. So once we have created this deck of cards Next, we want to be able to shuffle it to make sure that they are sufficiently random. So I'm going to set up a method in here to shuffle. So first, I'm going to grab the card count. From the list. And I'm going to create a new object of type random. And so our shuffle operation is actually a well known algorithm called the Fisher Yates shuffle. So you can go look that up. Uh, but it basically goes like this. So we, we start out with a for loop, and we will need to determine the number of times that we want to shuffle through and I didn't set up my num times variable I got ahead of myself usually we set that up in here so when you call shuffle you tell it how many times that you want to run this pass and then inside of here is a nested for loop and we visit every card position once per time that we've specified in the outer loop. Um, so we'll create an index and while that index is less than the card count then we create a random number using that uh, random number object that I created up here. And so to create a random number, uh, let's do index swap time. Uh, we just call that object and then dot next. And you can seed it with a value. You don't have to, but um, it, this particular algorithm um, wants you to seed it with the card count. So then we swap the cards at the index and that index to swap. And so we create a card. I'm going to call it temp. And it's not an object. It's just a variable of type card. And so that's because we are going to manipulate the elements in the array, which are also of type card. So in this, uh, I don't know why I named this index swap time. I meant index swap position. <laughs> Sorry, words are getting away from me as I type and talk here. So our first card um, is that index swap position. We put that into temp. And then our card that currently resides at index swap position, 
we're going to take the one that resides at the index position and place it in there and then we take the temp card and place it in index. So a little bit of a, a shuffle around there between our variables. And if it helps, you can go uh, check out the uh, Fisher Yates shuffle. Right, nice uh, Wikipedia link in there for you. So we have our cards, we have our deck, we can create a deck of cards, we can shuffle that deck of cards. And so this feels like a good stopping place for this part two video of our tutorial. And so in our next section, we'll be able to uh, start looking at how to take those images that we imported into our resources and get them to show up. And we'll actually hook up our button and be able to create a new game so that we can be sure that we're able to use this deck class to actually create a new deck and start working towards some actual gameplay elements. So uh, I look forward to uh, moving you on to part three. See you then.